We have a bow visor out there that, that breaks some of the waves that the uh, first six vessels, vessel class one through six, and they get hit with those waves. And going through those waves, it hammers the hull. It slows them down. It's like bulldozing through the water. So Rides and time down. Without triple stacking containers, our payloads are almost identical with the 20 foot ISO containers. The best in class will haul 82. Double stack containers and this vessel's all 84, but we can also legally triple stack them. As I look to the future, I believe more fears can become more decentralized. Let's put a little more pressure on fuel users to make their decisions. And so we got to prepare you so you feel comfortable with coming. The important role that these uh, stuff like our vessels, our watercraft play in our ability to move Army forces all around this big theater. So the distance in the Pacific is, is daunting as you, as you look at it. And so for us, you know, we have soldiers on the Korean Peninsula, we have some in Japan, but the soldiers here in Hawaii really significantly reduces that, that distance. And so having a capability here is essential to, to our success in the future. So our defense strategy is to rebalance towards the Pacific. So we do take that into consideration as we make our decisions. And so, you know, we understand that this is an important part of our defense strategy, and that will be part of the decision making as we go forward. But the one thing we cannot do is not continue to invest in our training because I tell you, when I ask you, what do you, what, what keeps you up at night? And what keeps me up at night is if I, if I send one soldier into harm's way not properly trained. So it's incumbent on us that they have the facilities necessary for them to train properly. And so we have. We have a package out here that, that is, a, is a mobile uh, training package that we've developed specifically for the Pacific that is helping us to move it around so we can train. Uh, we want to continue to get the most out of the training areas that are available here uh, to our soldiers because they're so important in sustaining the range. And so we've increased uh, our manpower in the Pacific since rebounds by 40%. We've increased our investment in operational uh, missions by about 20%. So we have made a significant investment in the rebalance. And so I'm very comfortable with what we're doing right now. The capability we bring, it's being recognized as we work together to see where joint and complementary capabilities dovetail and where they might culminate. Uh, we're critical because we are the single log operational headquarters. And I'm the only log operator and commander in the Pacific, so I'm responsible for all of that. So our ability to bring those joint partners together on behalf of the nation is uh, best in stewardship. So I said, some of our capabilities are really critical. Uh, the training that we've done is critical, and our ability to continue to keep this force structure gives you a great return on investment for a small footprint. Young leaders are learning not only about the Army, but about how to be a little bit more operationally and strategically focused. Why are they here in the Pacific? So they're agile and adaptive. They understand the regional strategy, and it makes them better leaders, and, and so that's very important. Our next focus is warfighting readiness, of course, to sustain the force and our interoperability with our joint partners. And then uh, lastly is exercising mission command, because we have to be able to command and control, or what we call mission command, multiple types of organizations, not just logistics and sustainment organizations, as we sustain the force. So we have to be able to demonstrate 
capabilities in phase zero and provide options to rapidly transition to subsequent phases so that our leadership has options so they can quickly go back to steady state. And so if we're on our game and we do our business every day in sustaining the force, we're also assembling. Logistics support vessel and the capability it brings as a, an expeditionary capability, right? We're no longer a force-based uh, force, uh, force projection and expeditionary nature. being self-sustaining. Uh, the logistics support vessel with a crew of 32 is self-sustaining. It's an ocean-going vessel and they can do uh, all of the repairs on site themselves while they're underway should, should they have to have a, uh, uh, you know, a maintenance issue. Each of our Army Mariners is trained to work on all of those things. As good stewards, we want to ensure that we exercise all of our capabilities and we bring them to bear rather than letting them sit idle. I think that's in the best interest. And uh, when we have these capabilities and they can work in conjunction with our, not only our joint partners like the Navy and Marine Corps, but with our ho uh, host nation uh, partners that are inviting us in, right, our partners and allies, they're excited about these kinds of capabilities because they have some of these capabilities. And so working together, just expands our ability to conduct operations, it builds uh, good relationships, and it leads to more stable and secure Pacific AOR.